Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Joe Noonan to the show today. He is the founder of Planetary Partners at planetarypartners.com. I'm very interested in his work. He does so many different things, and one of them is custom trips, swimming in the wild with dolphins. His dolphin videos on YouTube have had over 200,000 views. They're adorable. I have such a profound love of dolphins. I want to hear more about them. I have a great concern on what's happening in Japan with them. And if anybody can talk to us about the marvel of dolphins, it's Joe Noonan. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Joe Noonan to It's Rainmaking Time. Good afternoon. Oh, Kim, thank you. It's uh, an honor to be on your show. I, I've um, listened and looked. I mean, you have had so many people speak on so many wonderful things. I'm really honored to to be on your show and to talk about probably one of the greatest things I love to talk about, because talking about dolphins is almost as good as being in the water next to them. <laughs> First of all, thank you for what you've said. I've had one opportunity a few years ago. My girlfriend took me to SeaWorld to just be in the water and touch dolphins. I felt like it was the most profound appetizer. And I also know that with my love of dolphins, I need to get in the water with them in the wild. And that's something you do that other people don't often do. And I'd like you to share that with us first, if you wouldn't mind. Sure, sure. Well, um, Kim, I like you, and I think most people have, I mean, we basically have an instant joyful reaction to any images of dolphins. I mean, I, you know, I, I grew up watching Flipper and, and uh, I think cross cultural and you take anybody, any part of the world and you show them a photo of a dolphin and they smile, it's automatic. And, um, I was blessed to have my own direct experience in Hawaii. I actually was living in New England at the time and I flew to Hawaii specifically to go into the ocean because I'd heard that, you know, there were places where uh, you could swim with the wild dolphins. And, um, you know, Kim, I got in the water. Uh, I went day after day after day and there were no dolphins. And, uh, <laughs> I got, qu- yeah, yeah, I got quite, uh, you went into a dolphinless ocean. How could that be? Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, I, I really have come to recognize that everything in life is perfect. And everything has its timing. And I thought my appetite to swim with them, I thought I arrived with it already revved up. But let me tell you, after five days of looking for them, on the sixth day, I was ready. And that was the day they were in the bay. Wow. And, um, oh, Kim, it was, I mean, I, I get goosebumps just talking about it. It's one of the things, of the many things that happened. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful story. And, um, Basically, uh, you know, I got in the water and these six dolphins swam up to me and looked me right in the eye. And when you're in the water and a wild dolphin or a whale comes up and looks you in the eye, there's a, there's a transmission that takes place. There's a, there's a connection that people stumble for words to describe. And uh, after many years, I, I think the closest description I can say is that in addition to this total wave of cellular exuberance and this ecstatic energy of, oh my God, there's, there's also a very profound sense of recognition. And it took me a long time to be able to understand that. It's a sense of recognition. It gave me a sense of belonging that I don't think I had ever felt in my life that I was seen by this beautiful creature who was very sentient, very present, very alive. And I felt seen in a way that really opened something up for me. And I I got out of the water that day, a changed man. Aren't they considered the carriers, the transmitters of pure love? Like when you're in the water with them, that that's the transmission? People tell me that. Is that true? Absolutely. And I think that that's something that's available on some level, so are we. We're spiritual beings having a human experience, and our essence is pure love. And of course, we're we're down here on the game of, you know, good and bad, right and wrong, light and dark. Dolphins don't have that same polarity, or they don't have that same 
intent for being here. I actually believe that they're spiritual beings having a dolphin experience. And they're here to be of love and assistance and to help us remember the truth of who we are. I think that's profound. You know, they always have a smile on their face. <laughs> they do. They do. And it's a, it's a biological, I mean, it's, it's, you know, how they've grown. And, um, I mean, dolphins throughout history have treated us as, uh, in a sense, uh, a, a younger cousin because they've consistently come to our aid, even even at their own risk, such as, you know, uh, inter- interfering with a shark attack and, and, uh, and putting themselves in harm's way. And, um, and when you watch, if you have watched footage of what's going on in, in Japan. And, I have, and, and I can't bear it. I literally can't bear it. And that's the only place I would say that I can't agree that everything is perfect. It's in instances like that. There's nothing perfect about the killing and the violating and the torturing of these animals, or any, really. Well, it's clear even when the fishermen are in the water and have them in the shallows and on the beach, um, and, and they're literally cutting them, you know, slicing their throat and whatnot. The dolphins, which have are fully capable of self-defense, fully, uh, don't bite. They don't bite. I think that they're... Um, it's, for me, another example of um, their commitment to come from love. As you know, we humans anthropomorphize so many things. And in the years past, I probably would have said we're imposing our human translation on what they're doing. But for someone who spent as much time with them as you have, I can really hear that now. You know, Kim, I I agree. I mean, it is very natural for us, just like... You know, we've put, we've, we've done the same thing with God. We've made God with two arms, two legs, and very judgmental. You know, and uh, but dolphins. I've had enough experiences that I just, time and again, I just experience them as having a profound generosity of spirit, such that uh, I've been in the water swimming with them. And um, again, I, you know, I only bring people to swim with wild dolphins, and uh, and have had. A mom and calf come over, and and the mom and baby, and of course as they come, typically mom comes, and and the baby's on the outside of mom, and in the process of swimming with them, slowly, you know, the baby drops down and she's under mom, and then at a certain point, you know, the baby mom lets the baby come up between us, and I have even had, and I remember the first time this happened, I was in Hawaii. Because Hawaii and the Bahamas are two of the main places I bring groups and families. Um, You know, I was just in love with this mom and baby and played with them for several hours when all of a sudden mom took off and I was left with the baby. And I can remember just this, oh my God, it's like the first time I'd ever been babysitting. And I got (laughs) that, you know, they they were totally... I mean, everything they do is deliberate. I, you know, I have just um, bestowed upon them, uh, to whatever extent they're willing, the the full right to coach and educate me because uh, they're incredibly intuitive, incredibly sentient, incredibly spiritually aware beings. Would you explain to the audience the word sentient? Because you've used it a few times. I know what it means, but maybe some people don't know what that means. Explain it, and then I want you to go on. Well, ascension is that basically it has feelings. And what humanity tends to do is dehumanize each other, which is how we've justified slavery. You know, we said people different than us don't have the same kinds of feelings. And, and we also, you know, many cultures and particularly scientific communities say that animals don't have feelings, that mammals don't have feelings. And that, you know, when elephants mourn and stick around right. um, the dead body for a week. And cry. Uh, and cry. Yeah, yeah. People, and, and to even say that, um, you know, our dogs and cats and, and the animals that we know and love don't have feelings. They, they don't feel, they don't have compassion, they don't feel pain and joy and love. And, you know, that's, to me, that's just 